So I was fishing with my friends Jimmy and Kaipo for the very first time. And on my first cast, Kaipo, who was an incredible fisherman and a halibut slayer, hooked up on a 24-inch halibut on the Lucky Craft 110 Electric Runyon while I was only about 25 yards away from him, also throwing the Lucky Craft. I'd heard the stories and seen the pictures, but now I was able to see him slay in person and confirm that he definitely knows what he is doing. What was he doing different from me that was giving him success? Well, I ended up skunking that day, but I was able to pick his brain and gain some valuable knowledge and tips. What exactly did he share with me? Stay tuned to find out. Morning guys. We're starting off a short pound session today. Um, on the low, it was a negative tide maybe about an hour and a half ago or so. Tide's still rolling in. Uh, got here a little bit early, still a little bit too low, but um, wanted to time it right so I can catch that window. I believe that there is a short window where the bite is most likely to trigger. Fish here with uh, my good friend Jimmy from Beyond the Trail 365 and my brother Kaipo, my new friend and a slayer. And uh, he's been so, so helpful, um, just teaching me um, some of his tips and tricks and uh, very grateful for his help. Um, I'm gonna be throwing a couple different setups. The first one is gonna be the drop shot. And I'm gonna be throwing this on a one ounce torpedo and the Mickey swim bait, Pearl. And I also got some Optimum swim baits that will be kinda um, throwing out different things, uh, trying to get a bite with that. And as always, the Lucky Craft the Flash Minnow 110 and we're gonna start off with the Cherry Berry and we also got a couple of other colors. Uh, hopefully we'll make a good video out of this. Appreciate your guys' support. Highlights. Alright guys, so you know you hear a lot about structure. That can be really confusing and you know identifying structure is something you acquire and learn over time. It's a low tide incoming but what I'm looking right here in front of me it's uh, yet to be properly filled in. The little hole right in front of me is sucking out you can see it, the water's a little darker. If I were to step into that, it'd probably be about thigh high. Um, we would want it to fill in more before um, fish would fill into it, but I'm gonna cast here. I'm gonna step over this little hole here, and there's a little, uh, little sandbar that I can step out to that's still probably like half deep. Um, and right out there, it drops off into another trough. So I'm gonna try casting into that area and seeing if some of the fish are at the edge or in the back waiting to come in. It's still an early incoming tide. Looks like there is a southbound current. One tip that uh, my friend Kaipo taught me when I fished with him the other day and see if you can catch this because it, it just seems so valuable to me and we're going to try to practice that today and apply it is you know i always say find the structure find the fish so that's that's a good chunk of the battle you can't just show up to the beach and start casting wherever you want um, you got to find the holes in the simplest way i can put it is when you're a swimmer and you're walking on the beach and you're walking in the water and you take a step and suddenly you just drop down to your waist or to your chest. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for that, that structure. So that's the, that's the first part. You find that, um, you're already in a good place. What Kaipo taught me, and I feel I kinda, you know, took my knowledge to another level, is from that point, you wanna see which way the current is. So if you find the hole, and let's say the hole is right there, and you notice the current is swirling this way, a lot of times, most of the time, um, it seems that the halibut and the fish are going to be piled up towards the entry of that hole where the current's going this way. Um, and that makes sense because they'll be at the edge of that trough or that structure waiting for bait to be pushed that way so they can snap off. So if you find the structure but you're fishing the opposite of the current on the other side, more than likely the fish will be on the, on the opposite end of that. So what we want to do today is we want to find the structure number one and then we want to identify the current. It looks like it's pushing south. So we want to find the entry point of the structure from north to south and cast accordingly and try to find the fish that way, if that makes any sense. So we're going to try to apply that today and see if we can have any luck. So this is a little hole where they can be piled up right here. 
So I'm gonna kind of do maybe not quite a parallel, but at an angle and bring it over through that little drop off there. Um, it's a little deeper, a little bit better chance of fish holding. Now I already cut off once because there are a lot of rocks and but to be honest with you guys, that's just the cost of uh, fishing the surf, especially in fishy areas. Um, you gotta be willing to lose your stuff, man. A lot of times that's where the fish are gonna be. So I'm just doing, you know, I got a four inch um, optimum swim bait on here. It has a nice paddle tail action. And we're just doing a steady retrieve. You wanna be feeling the bottom for your weight to be dragging through the sand. I'm kicking up some, you know, kicking up the sand as it's as you're retrieving it. Um, but you want that thing to be swimming on the bottom. Oh, there's a bite. On. Yeah, right at the edge, guys. Oh, and he's a polar. Dude, he was hit, he was just hiding out right at the edge. Um, I actually paused my retrieve a little bit. Um, feels like a decent fish, not a huge fish, but he's got some weight on him, so let's see if we can bring him home. Yeah, that worked out perfect. Oh yeah, it's a decent halibut. Kicking around there. See if we can swim through this trough. Dope. All right, guys. Check them out on the camera. Got him on the drop shot, um, optimum swim bait. I'm guessing about a 20. Mouth closed. Yeah, solid 20 on this guy. Hi. Hi. What'd you catch? It's a halibut. Dude, I thought I thought, wow, that's even uglier than I Yeah. <laughs> they sure are. What's up? No, it needs to be right at that uh, yellow line, the 22. So I'm, I'm letting everything go today anyway. It's more for the love. Yeah, thank you. All right, guys, let's go ahead and let this guy go. Not legal. Uh, it was a solid 20. But let's get this guy back on the water. All right guys, so was just able to get a 20 inch halibut. Um, not the right kind, but still a good good size and a nice little fight, nice little halibut. Um, was using this uh, kind of smelt pattern um, optimum bait. And kind of like as I mentioned in the video, it was really cool to have it work out. And you know, thanks to my friend Kaipo for the tips, I tried to you know apply what he taught me the last session and uh, just try to get better as a fisherman. Um, it's low tide, but um, there was some front structure, but right behind it was a deeper trough. Um, so I tried hitting that, but also tried to identify which way the current was going. So it was a little bit of a southbound current. So I kind of casted from north to south, not quite parallel, but at an angle, and tried to hit the lip where the water was running over. So the path that the water is running past, the halibut are going to be on the edge of that trough, waiting for bait to come by. And strike and that's exactly what happened I brought it up to the edge of that lip um, there's a drop off I brought my swim bait did a nice steady retrieve and brought it right to that lip and then I gave it a little bit of a pause and at that point it was just chilling there the current was probably having the paddle tail work on its own um, and that's when the halibut bit so um, super rewarding to get that bite let's see if we can get some more 